Des Moines, Iowa, March 10, 1973. The final round of the Iowa Girls High School Basketball Tournament. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Zabel, and I'll have the pleasure of narrating and commenting on one of the big athletic attractions in the entire Midwest and certainly eagerly awaited by the 15,000 fans filing into Veterans Auditorium right now. The championship game between Minneapolis, the number one rated team in Iowa girls basketball all season with a record in, of 30 and 0 against a team that has come out of central Iowa to capture the imagination of all of these fans. The fastest teams we've ever seen in girls basketball, 8-0, which has run its record now to 29 and 0. They'll be playing for the championship before a crowd of 15,000 tonight. And the crowd for the week has been absolutely phenomenal. Close to 85,000 fans will have seen this tournament this week. This represents the final climactic night of girls basketball and the final night for all of these more than 500 teams that started on the tournament trail some four weeks ago. So stay tuned now for 1973 Girls State Championship Basketball. <laughs> Official welcome sign at Auditorium in Des Moines, which has seen 80,000 people attend this meet. From North Central Iowa and the Big Marsh Conference comes our first team. They've been here five times previously. Their coaches made nine trips to state. Here is Coach Dale Fogel and the Allison Bristow Trojanettes. One of the teams that made their first trip to the final 16 is our next squad. They were 11th rated in the final rankings and won the Great River Conference. Meet coach Robert L. Sampson and the Andrew Hawks. Our next team also has made their first trip to state and they also avenged a sectional defeat to make it here to the tournament. For the first time from Northwest Iowa, the Clay Central Comanches. Our next team had the highest score in the state this season with an average of 51 points a game. They were ranked seventh in the final standings. They won the Des Moines River Conference. Coach Lloyd Broxius and the Colfax Tigerettes. This team is one of the former champions in this year's field. They won the state title back in 1971. They've been to the final 16, 14 times starting in 1936. Coach Leon Plummer and the Farragut Adets. No team has ever won three state championships, but our next town can lay claim to titles in 1953 and 54. Coach Richard Bangs and the Garnavillo Hawks. This team survived a squeaker in the regional final to make it to tournament. They come from Northwest Iowa, were winners of the Little Sioux Conference title. Coach Gary Rusk and the Hinton Blackhawks. Our next school will have representatives both in the girls and boys state tournaments of 1973, composed of students from Hartwick, Ladora, and Victor, HLV, and the Warriorettes. Another of the first timers at the state meet, one of the tallest squads ever in the field. This team ended the season ranked second in the state and undefeated for regular season competition. Meet coach Bud McCray and the Lakeview Auburn Hawkettes. Three times this team has made it to the final 16. They were one of the tall teams. They played excellent defense. The 20th rated team in Iowa, coach Kurt Meharry and the Manson Eagles. Another of the teams making the first trip to the state finals, they closed the campaign with 23 wins and three losses. Here is coach Kerry Griffith and the Orient Maxburg Bulldogs. Three communities make up our next school, Rudd, Rockford, and Marble Rock. They were one of four undefeated teams in the final 16. They were the fourth rated team in the state. Here comes coach Gene Guilinford and the Rockford Warriorettes. Iowa is noted for its leadership in girls athletics, not just basketball, for which it's been famous for many years, but all athletics. No state in the nation can match Iowa's record for interest and participation in girls sports. And this 1973 all sports parade of champions testifies to that fact. In addition to the other members of the Sweet 16 that did not make it to the final round, we're also seeing champions of all the other meets and events and sports conducted under the auspices of the Girls High School Athletic Union. 
During last year, a total of close to 2,000 teams competed for the 13 championships in girls and co-ed sports. These included indoor and outdoor track, which alone have more than 10,000 girls competing. Distance running, swimming, gymnastics, golf, tennis, volleyball, softball, and of course, basketball. Some of the teams we've been looking at as the girls parade onto the court include the Roosevelt Rough Riders of Des Moines in swimming, Davenport West in field hockey, the Manila Hawkettes, who've been a standout in track, the Nesco Zeering Royal Queens, who've been summer champions of baseball, state tournament contenders from Clear Creek, Mason City, and Collins. The music for tonight's consolation and final round games is being furnished by the Music Masters Show Band, Delay High. Few athletic tournaments and championship games anywhere in the country can match the color and pageantry that surround the final night of girls basketball in Iowa. And this is a good example. The presentation of the flags of all 50 states done in March Temple with intricate floor maneuvers and cameo shots representing the slogans and outstanding productions of those states, accompanied by the song of each state and a brief reading for each one. This, in turn, is followed by the presentation of the colors. And no marching group anywhere does it more effectively than Des Moines Stepperettes, five times national champions in precision drill competition. The blending of the 50 state flags into one ceremony, coupled with the presentation of the colors by the Stepperettes. All of this arranged and performed by high school students signifies the unity that athletics can bring to our society and the vast resourcefulness and accomplishment of our young people. And where else can these talents better be put on display than before this packed auditorium of 15,000 fans and the hundreds of thousands who are watching on an eight-station television network covering all or part of nine different Midwest states. Girls basketball, it's been said, was the outgrowth of a strong desire for recognition by smaller communities in the state many years ago. Also by a strong desire by young ladies to engage in athletic competition just as do men. Both of these twin goals, or motivating forces as you will, long since have been expanded and refined so that now, not only the smallest towns of the state, but some of the largest towns and schools also receive recognition. The tremendous growth of popularity of girls' athletics throughout the state testify to the fact that there's both a need and desire for a broad-based program in girls' athletics throughout our high school system. These people tonight are seeing the best of that competition perform. But for every girl here, thousands of others throughout the state who had the benefit of competitive programs in athletics, as well as a sound program in academics and extra extracurricular activities. The music masters who have supplied the music for the entire tournament play in the traditional big band style under the direction of Jerry Kinney, a graduate of Drake University here in Des Moines. The show band makes numerous appearances in and around the state of Iowa. Drum major is Kevin Smith, Valley High School of West Des Moines. The cameos tonight are being performed by Valley High of West Des Moines drama and speech students. Jim Lanson and Jane Crichtonier are directors. The color guard, the Dowling Stepperettes, Doug Kelso, director. Musical arrangement, Roger Chrysler. And the soloist, Patty Whiting, Valley High of West Des Moines. Pageant supervisor, Bob Scarpino, and pageant coordinator, Jerry Kinney. And the title of the pageant, Fantasy of Flags, preceding the big event of the night, 1973 Girls' State Championship game. And as these girls march, we must remember that they are part of the huge number of bands and basketball players and other sports members throughout the state that are watching this tonight with definite identification and hopes that they too can make it to the state tournament field next year in competition or can make it to take part in the pageantry surrounding this great competition. Now, Adele versus Minneapolis for the 1973 title. The captains and referees of both schools meet in a pregame conference, and the crowd is eager in anticipation. The starting lineup for Adele. At guard, Sherry Bloom, Judy Lineman, and Patty. In the forward court, Mary Carroll, Julie Goodrich, 
Joyce Elder and coach Larry Niemeyer. For Minneapolis, a guard, Marcia Neal. Carl Squareen. And Susie Schofield. In the forward court, tournament queen, Heather Heddens. Diane Tucker. And sophomore scoring sensation, Debbie Coates. Coach Vernon Bud McLearn. All right, this is the moment we've been waiting for, and the ball is put in play in the forecourt of the Gals in Light. That's Minneapolis under relief. Debbie Coates keeps the score. Debbie Coates makes it two to nothing in favor of Minneapolis. Adell with a ball in play. Julie Goodrich, number five. Over to Mary Carroll, back to Goodrich. Carroll, number 11. They give her just one shot and a foul called on Goodrich and she tried to reach in and get the ball away from number 30, Sue Schofield. So now, Minneapolis will throw it in from the defensive end. Minneapolis taking the early, Jerry. One. Heather Eddins, the team's leading scorer a year ago, into Coates underneath, and Coates makes it two straight buckets. A very tough gal to stop. She's only a sophomore. Scored 72 points in one game here at State. Carroll, number 11, with the ball for Adell. And Goodrich trying to drive in and through. Pass is blocked, traveled. Julie Goodrich traveling with the ball. Minneapolis Bullets now out of the backcourt with the ball. Debbie Coates. Here's Coates again with it. Three straight buckets for Debbie Coates. And Minneapolis roars away to a 6 to nothing lead. That's their offense. They come right at you. Goodrich. Over to Carroll. They're trying to get into Elder. Back to Goodrich. Julie Goodrich. She's only a junior. Pops it through five feet six. Heather Hedden, she's the tournament queen. Tucker underneath. Coates again. And four straight field goals for amazing Debbie Coates. She's a tournament scoring leader, 173 points in three games so far. She's getting Eight. her spot down there on the baseline, Jim, and she's hit four in a row. Carroll with the ball. Underneath the Joyce Elder. And that's the shot that she has to start getting. Got it over the head of Marcia Neal, the postcard, number 54. Minneapolis leading, 8-4. to four. They have the ball in four court. Heather Hedden is forced into a jump. Tied up by Judy Lineman, number 21. Hedden number 20. Right, keep your hands, keep your hands, put them. That's it, that's it. Okay, here we go. And it's Minneapolis, Tucker. To Coates. Even makes it over the great guarding of Patty Turley. Adele is giving away a lot of sides in that uh, back court. Here's Goodrich forced out along the baseline. Carroll. A little bit short on that one. Marcia Neal with the rebound. Ball is taken back by Adele. Goodrich comes up with it. Nice job of deflection there by Turley, number 25. Carroll with it for Adele. Here's Goodrich. She squeezed in around Marcia Neal, and Marcia Neal charged with a foul, no bucket. <coughs> no basket. The Tigerettes of Edel versus the Bullets of Minneapolis. Both teams undefeated. Joyce Elder go. will put the ball in play. These are both underclassmen. Elder, only a sophomore, swings around. And right now, Adele comes surging back. We have a four-point ball game. Minneapolis 10, Adel 6. Minneapolis in four court headings. The Tucker. Coates. Ball goes over head out of bounds as a two-time coach. <laughs> All right, they kept her from going to the baseline that time by dropping the guard right straight behind her, and she was not able to go get that lead-in pass. Lineman to Turley, to Goodrich. Adele with the ball. Carroll 
Underneath the elder. Look at that shot by Troy Silver. He's an outstanding track star as well. The Sadell team, all outstanding track in track and field. 10 to 8 ball game. Minneapolis by two. Tucker with the ball to Heddens. Back to Tucker. Coates being two time. Forces the shot down. Adel giving her one shot. Linneman with the rebound. Bloom, number 31. Pass intercepted and stolen back again by Coral Schwerin in the backcourt of Minneapolis. So the Bullets have it. Tucker to Heddens. To Coates, she's got position. And she makes it look easy when she gets on that side. Debbie Coates now with 12 points on six fielders. 12 to 8 score. The Bullets in front. Carroll over to Goodrich. Goodrich loses control of the ball. Hit her on the knee and rolled out of bounds. Sue Schofield will throw it in, number 30. There's that high baseball type pass over to Debbie Coates. Heddens, easy one for Tucker. The old sleeper plays. She gets back of the defense. <coughs> 14 to 8. Minneapolis. Julie Goodrich. Nice shot by Goodrich. She averaged close to 32 points a game during the season. Joyce Elder, only a sophomore, averaged about 34 for Adele. 14 to 10. Minneapolis. Ball intercepted by Patty Turley, number 25. Adele Tigerettes in their black uniforms. Elder out to Carroll. Ahead of the circle to Joyce Elder. Drives the baseline. Stops. Scores. Elder's getting her shot away beautifully. Yes, and uh, she's uh, giving away about two to three inches to that guard, but she really can get up in the air. Coates has the ball to Tucker. Number 10 to Heddens, number 20 to Tucker. To Coates underneath. Debbie Coates, bank shot. Well, she's been a one gal offense here. 14 points out of the 16 that eight. Minneapolis has the Bullets leading 16 to 12. Adell with the ball in forecourt. Carroll is open and she's not hitting the long one. Marcia Neal, 54 rebounds. Into Coates, forecourt. Turley guarding ever closely. Heddens, number 20. Coates, ball deflected and Turley tries to get it away. Foul on Turley. And she tried to get the ball away from Diane Tucker and they got involved in a wrestling match there. Tucker will throw it in. Diane Tucker stands five feet three, shortest hey, gal on the court. Heddens, ball slapped away. Beautiful play by Linneman to Turley. Now bounce pass across the line, and Adele has it in four court. Joyce Elder, Carroll, Julie Goodrich jumps and hits the lip of the basket. Marcia Neal with the rebound over to Coates. Heddens, Heather Heddens. To Diane Tucker back to Heddens again. She plays catch with Tucker. Coates with it. Underneath Heddens takes the feed that time, and that's what they do to you when the two time one, the other one scores. What a magnificent pass that was. 18 to 12, a six point lead for Minneapolis over Adele. Tigerettes have it in four court. Joyce Elder. Elder. Elder comes through with her fifth field goal and 10th point. 18 to 14, Minneapolis in a fast moving first quarter. Here's Coates. She has position. Heavy Coates roars down to get her 16th point of the ball game. Adel trailing by six again, 20 to 14. Julie Goodrich. Marcia Neal with the rebound. Heather Heddens. Diane Tucker to Heddens. Coates. Nice job of rebounding. Taking over the line, Shirley Bloom. Carroll. Goodrich. Elder. There's two. 20 to 16. We're going to have a high scoring game if it keeps up this way. Both these teams are capable of scoring up in the 90s. Nice job there by number 25, Patty Turley, as she comes up with another steal. Carroll. Goodrich. Marcia Neal with a rebound. Post guard does an excellent job. Deb Coates over to Heddens. Nice interception again by Turley. That Goodrich. Shows, that shows you the quickness of uh, Adele guards, Jim. Carroll. Goodrich. Finally finds the range. 
<laughs> and it's a two point ball game. Minneapolis 20, 8 L 18, 17 seconds to go. First quarter. Debbie Coates to, to Hedden, to Tucker. Coates. Debbie Coates gets her 18th point. Minneapolis has 22. And there's the end of the first quarter with the score. Minneapolis 22, Adele 18. Jerry, some hot shooting by Minneapolis. Uh, 11 of 13 from the field, and uh, they have uh, capitalized on both turnovers that the Adele girls have committed, while Adele has only capitalized on two of the six turnovers from Minneapolis. Adele with a ball in four court, trailing 22-18. Elder. We have a two-point ball game. 22 to 20. Minneapolis. The quickness and speed of Adele against the size and experience of Minneapolis. And now Debbie Coates going in for the shot and fouled by Patty Turley. Five foot eight inch guard. Five. Against five foot ten Deb Coates. We think that uh, Mediapolis is shooting hot from the field. Uh, Evans made a save on the ball that time, and Tucker comes up with it. Elder is seven for seven. Evans, number 20, feeds to Coates. Nice block by Turley. Out of bounds it goes. It'll be played in by Tucker, five foot three, along the offensive baseline. There's Evans to Coates. Got great wrist action, enabling her to shoot the outstretched hands of those guards. 20 points for Coates, 24 to 20, Minneapolis in front. Julie Goodrich for Adele. Mary Carroll and back to Goodrich again. Look at the speed of Goodrich as she retrieves her shot. And then also a foul called on Carl Squareen, number 44. Tremendous hustle there by Julie Goodrich. Not only did she save the ball, but she also got a foul on Shereen. So now it's Elder over to Goodrich. Mary Carroll. Carroll starts to hit. Two-point ball game again. Minneapolis 24, Adele 22. Minneapolis in four card headings with it. We're in the second quarter, 6.53 to play. In the first half, Coach to Tucker to Headens. Heather Hedden, she was the leading scorer on this Minneapolis team a year ago. This year she averaged 17, Coates averaged 43. Wide open shot by Carroll. Minneapolis 26, Adel 24. Ball slapped away by Turley. Great defensive play by Turley again. Tremendous quickness on this Adel team. Carroll. Julie Goodrich. Here's Elder. Gets the ball away. It's the first shot she's missed. <coughs> Minneapolis with the headings underneath. Over to Coates. If Coates gets it and gets position, you can kiss it goodbye. 22 points out of uh, 28 for Minneapolis. 28 24. Minneapolis leading. Goodrich. Carroll. To Goodrich. Great job of rebounding by Neal. She is powerful underneath there. Hedens to, to uh, Deb Coates. Back to Heather Hedens again. Out for on the rebound. It'll be down court for Adele. The Tigerettes will have it. And Deb Coates. Sometimes I can remember him missing. Look at that pass. Patty Turley, half the court. Elder, of course, got it, and now Carroll to Goodrich. Goodrich tied up, and they call her for a foul. Julie Goodrich charged with a foul. And she tried to get the ball away from Sue Schofield. The guard had possession, Jim, and she came in and, and tied her up, which is against the rules as far as girls' basketball is concerned. 28 to 24, Minneapolis has the ball out of the backcourt. Schofield. Across the line. Heather Heddens. Coach to Heddens. Heddens. To Coach. 
Back to coach again. Underneath the head. He blows an easy one, but the follow through is good by Debbie Coates. Debbie Coates now with 24. Excellent pick and roll set by Mediapolis that time. Head and set the pick, roll to the basket. Coach gave her the ball. They missed, but Coach was there for a rebound. Here's Joyce Elder. Rhonda Meeker, number 32, is now in the backcourt for Mediapolis. Joyce Elder shot partly blocked and a foul called on Mediapolis. On Adel, Mary Carroll. Mediapolis leading 30-24. And uh, Larry Niemeyer wants a timeout for his gals from Adel. So a timeout on the floor with the score of Minneapolis 30, Adel 24. All right, and now we're going to have Coach shooting the free throw. Foul called on Mary Carroll. One and one here for Coach. Debbie Coach with 24 points already. And we still got 424 left to go in the first half. Thirty to twenty-four. Got one there. Thirty-one to twenty-four. <laughs> Tucker takes the rebound for the Bullets. Edens. And a jump ball. Heather Edens will jump with Judy Linneman. 5-10 against 5-6 and Hedden's prevails. Deb Coates to Tucker. Hedden's. Coates. Hedden's playing catch. Here's Tucker wide open underneath. As they use Hedden's as a decoy and now Minneapolis with its biggest lead. Nine points. 33-24. Adele trying to come back. Goodrich. Mary Carroll to Goodrich. Elder. Trying to penetrate these very tough guards. Julie Goodrich shoots over their head. And it's 33 26. Edens with the ball. To Tucker. To Hedden. Here's Coates. She has a great release in that jump shot, doesn't she? Tremendous hang in the air. And then when you're six foot tall like she is, uh, the guard is either going, coming up or, or going down the way she can hang. Here's Julie Goodrich. Adele trailing 35-26. 2.58 left to go in the first half. Goodrich tries to get in and through. She's fouled by number 30, Sue Schofield. From Minneapolis. Black. Goodrich is going to have to score from this uh, opening in the key where she went into, Jim. Uh, they're really starting to bottle uh, Elder up underneath that basket. They're going to take that baseline away from her. They're not going to give her the easy shot, that's for sure. Carroll over to Goodrich. Now here's Elder. She does get position on Neal and puts it over her head and through the hoop. 35-28. Minneapolis in front. Coach to Tucker. To Hedden. Tucker. Back to Hedden. This is the ball and it goes out of bounds. Heather Hedden. Ball hit her on the leg and rolled out of bounds. Well, if they can score off this possession, Adel will be down by just five. Patty Turley. Other guards, Sherry Bloom and Judy Lenneman. Grace Elder with the ball. Only a sophomore. Championship in track. And a foul on Rhonda Meeker. <laughs> foul on Meeker. Let's see, will this be shot? No, they're going to throw it in. Julie Goodrich. Ball slapped away by Meeker. She comes up with a steal. Susie Schofield now to four court. Heather Heddens to Deb Coates to Heddens. Diane Tucker. Over to Coach. Back to Heddens. Heather goes through on that shovel shot, and she's fouled by number 21, Judy Linneman, five foot six junior. One on one. I realize that Adele is only one senior in the starting lineup. Yes. And that's uh, Mary Carroll. Yes, and I guess they have a very outstanding freshman on their junior high team. Adele should be very respectable. In fact, who are you supposed to be the number one ranked team in the state next year? Well, I got to go with Adele, I'd say, right now. 
And Heather Heddens, as we're watching, pops through two of them. It's now 37 to 28. Minneapolis, both these teams can score with electrifying speed. Julie Goodrich over to Elder. Mary Carroll. Goodrich. Julie Goodrich. Between Goodrich and Elder, they averaged per game about 66 points this past season. So you can see their power. Here's Deb Coach. She averaged 43, and she should get it in this game. She's already up to 29, 39 to 30. Minneapolis by nine. She knows when to use that glass at that certain angle. Good at Goodrich. Elder. Ball is partly blocked. Once again, and now Goodrich goes after the ball, foul on Ronda Meeker. It's interesting how much uh, Adele's quickness causes other teams to foul. They're in there scrapping for that ball, and when they get it, then sometimes the that uh, one -one. guard comes back and fouls just like she did there. It's a one and one for Julie Goodrich. 39 to 31, Minneapolis. 108 to play, first half. 39 to 32, Minneapolis. Marcia Neal, number 54, throws over to Debbie Coates, to Hedens, to Tucker. They run that same play, but they blow the shot. But the follow through by Hedens, still no good. Coates has followed through. Three times they miss it. Curly off with a rebound, and it's taken by Goodrich in Fort Court. That's the first time that's happened. All three Minneapolis Fords had a shot that time, Jim. Goodrich to Elder, but Neal steps in front and comes up with it. Coates with it to Hedden. 36 seconds to go, first half. Bud McLaren would like to expand that lead by two. To Tucker, 26 seconds. Here's Tucker with it. Hedden's to Tucker. We're going to stall it down. Heather Hedden's. Tucker. We got all three guards around Coates. They don't want her to get the easy one. She has the ball. Underneath, slapped away. Adair has it. Two seconds. Goodrich. Julie Goodrich put every ounce of energy she had into that final shot. Almost fell flat on her face. A great first half. Minneapolis leading Adair 39 to 32. We'll be back with the Hall of Fame presentations in one moment. Since 1961, a total of 93 former Iowa girls basketball stars were nominated and subsequently elected to the Iowa Hall of Fame. The electees span a participation period from 1920 through 1966. Each receives the traditional Vicky Award. The 1973 girls state free throw champion, Pat Hummel of Stanton, runner-up Donna Mathias of Knoxville. Minneapolis, number one rated in the state all season, leading undefeated Adel, 39 to 32. Put in play in the fourth court of Adel or the team in black. And Elder throws it into Goodrich. They're driving toward the east basket to our right. Elder. Nice rebound by Carroll to Goodrich. And a blocking foul is called on Susie Schofield. Number 30. That'll give Adel Tigerich possession from their offensive baseline. <laughs> There's Elder to Goodrich. To Carroll. Along the baseline, the ball is slapped. It goes out of bounds, and it's going to be awarded up court to Minneapolis. <coughs> Couldn't control it there for the one out of bounds. Schofield will throw it in, number 30. In the guard court to Marcia Neal. Back to Schofield. Now the ball is deflected out. Touched by Elder and Turley of Adele. Played in by Tucker. Heather Hedens to Coates. Coates travels with the ball. Paddling penalty. So Adele gets it on a turnover here, and Patty Turley will throw it in. Number 25. Linneman. Cherry Bloom across the line to Joyce Elder. Number 51. Carroll. Over to Julie Goodrich. Back to Elder. Carroll 
Makes a save on it. Once again, they don't get a chance to shoot. Rhonda Meeker, number 32, got the ball and goes across the line to Heddens. Coates. Maybe Coates. And no good on the shot. And the rebound picked off by Bloom to Turley. Across the line. Now to Elder. Team's having trouble finding the bucket this half. Carroll to Goodrich. To Elder. They give her the screenshot, and they just can't find uh, the basket there. Marcia Neal and Rhonda Meeker with the rebound. Tucker. Coates. She finds it. Eddie Coates, the first two points of the second half, and now a nine point lead by Minneapolis, 31 or 41 to 32. Goodrich to Elder. Open shot by Elder, and she can't get it through the hoop. Marcia Neal with the rebound to Rhonda Meeker. Susie Schofield, number 30, across the line to Heddens. Tucker. Heddens. Tucker. To Heddens. Well, they really got uh, Coates in the sandwich down there, but she gets out of it, shoots, and scores. Heavy Coates, biggest lead Minneapolis has had, 11 points, 43 to 32. Carroll with the ball for Adell. Underneath to Elder, back to Goodrich. Once again, that's expensive shots because they're only getting one. Marcia Neal off of the rebound that time to Coates, to Heddens. Very expensive shots, Jim, because down here at this other end, uh, Minneapolis is putting that ball in that basket. They hit 72% the first half, 56% for Adele. That time they don't get it through the hoop, and it's in the forecourt now of Adele. Mary Carroll over to Goodrich. Back to Carroll again. They've tried six straight shots that haven't gone through. Schofield got the rebound that time and across the line to Hedden. Tucker. Hedden underneath the coats. Once again, she banks it in there. 45 to 35, 10 point ball game. Ball stolen away, and Goodrich puts it up there, but it's no good. Goodrich hit there too hard. Marcia Neal, number 54, is off with the rebound. Heddens with the ball. Barb Dawes, number 43, is coming to the lineup for Adele in their four court. Heather Heddens. And Coates rebounds, but she's called for a foul. Charging foul on Coates going after that rebound. 4.15 to play in the third period. The score, Minneapolis 45, Adele 35. Championship game of Iowa girls basketball, 1973. Julie Goodrich to Elder. That's the way those shots have been going for them tonight. They just haven't been dropping. Rhonda Meeker to Susie Schofield and now across the line to Tucker. To Heddens. Out to Tucker. Coates. Ball slapped away. Nice steal. They're going to keep it. They do keep it. Shirley Bloom got it. Number 31. Joyce Elder with it. And now fans are waiting for something to shout about here. Goodrich. Underneath to Dawes. There's Goodrich, and she still can't get the right angle on it. Forcing those shots. Here's Coates. Turley gets it, and Coates commits a foul. That's number two on Debbie Coates. We're getting some good defensive play. It isn't all poor shooting, because let's give some of these guards a little credit. They're doing a lot of pressuring out there. 3.20 to play, third period. 45 to 35. What was an all-offensive game now has turned into a defensive battle, as Gary just suggested. Dawes with the ball. Barb Dawes, number 43. It's the underside of the ring, and they all just can't get that ball through the hoop. Rhonda Meeker. To Coates. And Coates has it again, and it's up and through. 37 points for Debbie Coates. Minneapolis wants timeout, an official timeout. She apparently lost her contact lens. We're on time. 2.48 to play third period. 
Score Minneapolis 47 Adel 35. 37 points for Deb and apparently she's got the new lens again and her fans are all happy about that. Heavy coach's father is the football coach down in Minneapolis. She's only a sophomore. 15 years old. Goodrich with the ball. Adel has it underneath the elder. Kent by a bucket. Rhonda Meeker to Tucker. To Hedens. Tucker to Hedens. An easy one for Diane Tucker. And it's 49 to 35 Adel. Her biggest, or uh, Minneapolis over Adel. Biggest lead so far. Goodrich. To Elder. Finally hits it. That's Elder's first bucket of the second half. Adell is two for 12 in the third quarter. Nice rebound by Linneman, but it's taken away again by Hedden. Over to Tucker. Back to Hedden. And now back to Linneman. And now almost stolen back again by Totes. But to get it across the line. Dawes. Back to Barb Dawes. Goodrich. They have a jump. And it'll be Joyce Elder. Those against Marcia Neal. Those Minneapolis guards are really keeping Julie Goodrich out of that middle. She's not getting the drive like she was the semifinal game. Tip taken by Marcia Neal. Coach over to Hedden's. Debbie Coates. Heather Hedden. The coach. Guarded by Turley. She still gets it. And Patty Turley is one of the best defensive players in the tournament, which is testimony to the effectiveness of Debbie Coates. 39 points for Coates, 51 to 37, Minneapolis leading. Elder with the ball. Tries to fake Neal, drives in and through foul on Neal. Bonus. One, one, Elder will shoot, one and one. Elder will shoot uh, Joyce Elder one and one here. 105 left third period. Bonus now. Marcinia with a rebound. Minneapolis bullets with the ball in forecourt. Over to Hedden. Coach. Well, popped out of her hands by Turley, but aggressively she comes back with it. Tucker to Hedden. Heather Hedden. And it's now 53 to 37 as Minneapolis widens its lead. Goodrich to Dawes. Bob Dawes connects. Dawes gives her some additional height in that lineup. 53 39, Minneapolis with the ball and the lead. Barb Dolls was the leading scorer for Adel last year, Jim, until she injured her knee during the Christmas tournament. She was then replaced by Joyce Elder, and we can see how fine a ball player Joyce Elder is, and Dolls was never able to get back into the lineup again. Eight seconds to go. They're just stalling out the third period here, 53 to 39, because they'll retain possession up until the fourth quarter, and then they do. And the score at the end of three quarters is Minneapolis 53, Adel 39. All right, the score, Minneapolis 53, Adel 39. Jerry, what do you expect in this quarter? Well, both these times look a little tired. It's been a very... Uh, grueling tournament week. Uh, Adel has played uh, four consecutive nights. We may find uh, Minneapolis just coming out here like they are now and trying to just control the ball, work for good shots, and uh, let as much of that clock go down as they possibly can. That's Debbie Coates. She's going to be around for two more years, much to the dismay of opposing coaches. There's 41 points for Coates, 55-39 ball game, Minneapolis. There's not much that Adele can do any different than what they have been. They were getting their shots. They just were not able to connect. 
Ball bounced out of bounds by Marcia Neal. Here's Julie Goodrich. And there's an example of Marcia Neal's versatility as she picks off a pass. Mediapolis with the ball in fourth court. Heddens. Back to Heddens again to Tucker. Heddens. Tucker. Heather Heddens. Back to Heddens. I think you're going to see him just trying to control the ball. They're trying to work around, getting Coates or Heddens open, and uh, just taking their time out there. Working around, 6.48 to play. Coates has position, but she can't get the ball through the hoop. And it's Shirley Bloom off of the rebound. Cherry Bloom took the rebound, and Elder has it in four court now to Goodrich. Barb dives underneath to Elder. Puts on the move. She shoots, she's fouled by Rhonda Meeker, number 32. 55 to 39. She can make it a 15-point game. That Marcia Neal was really, to 41, That Marcia Neal was really playing the defense on the elder that time. She was really tigering her and pushing her on the floor. Three-point play by Elder. 24 points now by Elder. 55 to 42 in the fourth quarter. Minneapolis in front. Running for the 1973 Girls State Tournament Championship. Rhonda Meeker for Marcia Neal. Tucker across the line. Heddens to Tucker. Back to Heddens again and now over to Deb Coates. Rebounds very well to Tucker. Heddens. Over to Deb Coates. Back to Heddens again. Tucker. Oh, almost taken away and a foul call on Lundeman. Number 21. Lundeman charged with a foul. Score, Minneapolis 55, Adel 42. Here's Deb Coates. The young lady, only a sophomore. Scoring once again, Julie Goodrich, Corey Dell, Barb Dawes, followed through by Elder, good, she fouled. Foul is called on Marcia Neal. 5.23 to play, 57 to 44. The gap narrowing slightly, but time is also narrowing. Marcia with a rebound, playing with three fouls on her now. Deb Coates. Heather Hedden. Coates. Back to Hedden. Tucker. Coates trying that off balance shot, off angle shot. Patty Turley, 25 across to Joyce Elder, number 51. Goodrich. Does. Back to Goodrich. Elder. Trying to fake Neal. I think she's been rattled on that shot because of the pressure of Marcia Neal who grabs the rebound. Fires it out fast. Heather Hedden. Debbie Coates. Back to Heather again. 422 to play. Give and go underneath the Tucker. Beautiful feed by Heddens that time, Jerry. Yes, it looked like they, well, I imagine it is one of their plays because Tucker just stayed over on that one side of the basket. Heddens penetrated and shuffled the ball off to her. Elder to Dawes. Nice block down there by Mediapolis and Ronda Meeker with a rebound. The Mediapolis guards are playing outstanding defense. They pushed Elder far enough out on the floor to throw off his shooting. They've taken the middle away from Julie Goodrich. Now a foul on Lindemann, number 21. And every time uh, Adele puts a shot up, uh, those Minneapolis guards have got a hand on it. Diane Tucker will throw the ball in from the south sideline. 
here at Veterans Auditorium. Debbie Coates over to Hedden. 3.45 to play. And the championship will then be decided. Well, she bounces it away and is called for a foul. Letterman fire on his feet. Only Adele's third team foul of the second half. Debbie Coates, number 14, playing way on the outside now. <coughs> Simply eating up clock. Coates over to Tucker. Crowd howling for action. 59 to 44. Mediapolis with the lead. Coates and Heddens play catch. Crowd, especially the Adele crowd, getting quite vocal, and the Minneapolis crowd is cheering. The other night, it was the other way around, wasn't it, Jim? Right. Heather Hedges gets it back as they pull the defense out, and it's now 50, 61 to 44. They got the action. That's what Minneapolis was intending to do. Julie Goodrich. Carroll is back in there. Here's Elder. Swings around, off balance on his shot once again, and Marcia Neal with a rebound, fouled by Goodrich. Marcia Neal really has made a tremendous difference in this ball game, you know it? She has. Uh, Elder has 26 points, but she's worked for every one of them, and she uh, has only scored 10 this second half. Marcia Neal has done an outstanding, tremendous defensive job. It's the Mediapolis guard starting to win this ball game, or are winning the ball game for uh, Coach Bud McClern. Elder made a stab at that ball but couldn't get to it. And now the guards are playing wide, loose. Catch him. Foul on Julie Goodrich again. 61 to 44, 209 to play. We'll shoot this one and one down at the other end. It'll probably be Debbie Coates. And now Minneapolis heading out toward a 20-point lead. One girl. Bonus. for Coates to miss anything. Turley with a rebound gets it over in the front court. Carroll. Mary Carroll in the first half. Adel hit 56 percent which doesn't sound too bad except the Mediapolis hit 72 percent. Now the ball slapped back and forth. Turley battered it back over the line to Carroll. To Goodrich. Drops the ball. Has it again underneath the elder. Carroll. To Goodrich. The foul on Rhonda Meeker. Adele is very, very tired. They played three tough ball games to get this far. And when you've got to go against three tough guards like that, Jim, it's a chore. Tremendous hand for Marcia Neal and Rhonda Meeker as they go out of the starting lineup for Mediapolis. Coming back in for Mediapolis, Sue Schofield, number 30, and number 44, Coral Squareen. That's the first point of the second half that Julie Goodrich has scored. That shows the outstanding defense played by the Mediapolis Guards. Only the 13th point for Adele. All right, now the Mediapolis Guards bring it out. Heather Heddens in four court. There's Deb Coates. Rebounded by Tucker. Over to Heddens once again. A minute 15 to play. Tucker to Coates. And Debbie Coates does it again. That's her 45th point. Out of the 63, Minneapolis now has. Carroll, Mary Carroll for Adele. Julie Goodrich. Goodrich hits. But nowhere near as effective as she has been in previous games. Only 15 points thanks to the Minneapolis defense. Heddens to Coates. Position again. She hits. She's fouled by Turley. Chance to make a three-point play out of this one. She just beat Turley one-on-one. -on -one, came in on the weak side away from the ball. Received an excellent pass and put it in and was fouled. Number 13 in the lineup for Adele is Sue Farrell. Guard, five feet six. She makes a three-point play out of it. She now has 48 points. 
forty five seconds to play and Debbie Coach who certainly already has become one of the great all time Minneapolis players and still has two more years. If she keeps this up is destined to become one of the all time greats of girls basketball any place in Iowa. Now Adele with the ball in four court. Thirty five seconds to play as both teams make substitutions. Number 15 is Adele Barb Strait. Here's Barb Strait shooting and scoring. Corey Dell, number 15. Number 41, Kim Countryman is also in there. Ball is slapped out of bounds and now for Minneapolis in front court. Number 22, Rita Gardner. Number 40, Karen Peterson. Drive in by Gogner, no good, and ball loose on the court. So now we move over to the opposite end with 11 seconds to play. Dawes goes to the line now for Adel. Bob Dawes, number 43. Four substitutions coming in for Adel. One one, girl. One one. Barb Dawes at the free throw line for Adele. 11 seconds to play. Minneapolis 66, Adele 50. <laughs> 66 to 51. Gals from Minneapolis in a state of wild elation. They count it down, the Cadence count. Minneapolis on its way to the state championship. And there's a little icing on the cake. The final jump shot there by Karen Peterson puts it through. And the final scorer is Minneapolis 68, Adele 51. And so mighty Minneapolis started the season rated number one in the state and the bullets wound up the season still rated number one. For the record book, young Debbie Coates, only a sophomore, led her team in scoring with 48 points. Diane Tucker came in with 10. We imagine we may see Debbie in future years. Classman led by Joyce Elder, the five foot eight inch sophomore. Joyce got 26 points in the championship game. The all tournament team, Minneapolis sophomore Debbie Coates, named captain of the team, and her guard, Marcia Neal, also selected.